If you read some books on perfumery, um, anybody read the book Emperor of Scent? Yeah. yeah. This is about um, Dr. Luca Turin trying to get people to listen to his theory on why we s smell things. Why does benzyl acetate smell of jasmine? Why does phenyl ethyl alcohol smell of rose? And there are two basic theories. One theory is that it's the shape of the molecule. So the idea is that in our receptors, we have little areas that can receive molecules. And a molecule comes along Yeah, a molecule comes along, sits in the receptor, it fits in the receptor, and then sends a signal to the brain. This is uh, a theory from the 50s by John and Moore. The other main theory, which is vi vibration, vibrational, by Dr. Luca Turin. He's a doctor as well, so it's a bit unfair not to say he's a doctor. Yeah. Dr. Luca Turin. Resurrected an idea that what we detect is the vibration between the bonds in a molecule. So when there are two, two bonds, there's some vibration between them, there's some stress. The trouble is when we draw molecules like this, it gives the idea that they're fixed structures. But actually, they're moving all the time. And these structures, this, this corner represents an atom. And an atom is a nucleus with, an electro with electrons circling around it. And it was generally regarded that the atom is the smallest part of matter. <coughs> is that true? No. Yeah, we now know there are smaller parts still. But if we take this, this most solid part of an atom, the nucleus and the electron, we draw them like this. How small are they? Nanometer, na nanometers, yeah. Ang Angstroms, they, they measure them in? Millionths of <coughs> millimeters? If, does anybody know this that studied chemistry? If the nucleus was the size that I've drawn here, so if we got one atom of hydrogen and we blew it up in a magnifying glass until the nucleus was this size, how far would this electron be away? One foot. Normally when we see it in a drawing, this is how we see it. Anybody know this answer? The distance between an electron and a nucleus, if we expanded to this size, would be about two miles. Yeah? Two miles. So that would be halfway to Bangkok. Yeah. So th what that means actually is matter, even looking at this fairly solid piece, as these are solid pieces, is 99.99999% space. So the solid universe that we perceive, 
the floor that you're standing on is essentially space. Yeah. And now it turns out that the electron isn't a solid. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the uh, nucleus is not a solid piece. That's mostly space as well. Yeah. So everything is space. Matter, is, there's very, very little matter in matter. Yeah. And when we talk about shapes, It m doesn't make so much sense when we see this from the point of view. Yeah? An atom is like the Earth with a moon going around it, yeah? but just much, much smaller. So we have little universes inside ourselves. Now, the perfume industry is very solidly behind the shape theory. All, I think, all of the, the aroma chemists working on new molecule development follow this, this idea that is to do with shape. I think that after this exercise this morning, you will start to appreciate it probably isn't shape. It's probably more to do with vibration. But there's a problem with this. If you study um, immunity, cells, they all work on this lock and key system, which is the shape theory. If Dr. Luke Turing is correct, the implications for all the science that's built around over 100 years on the lock and key system sort of falls apart, and that's the danger. Yeah. So everything is like based on this shape theory, and yet if the smell theory b turns out to be vibration, it sort of says, oh, maybe immunity isn't a receptor site with a certain shape. Maybe that's vibrational too. So it's an interesting time. And the book The Emperor of Scent is about that battle, really, and it's a, it's a fantastic book to read.